logic, and looping. I've written a script called logic and looping.sh. Let's run it. The script prompts the user to choose a control flow operator. During this week's readings, you should read about all of these kinds of control flow operators. If, case, while, until, for. Let's type a 1, indicating if, and see what happens. Prompted for an integer. And that's it. That's all there is to that part of the script. It's not very interesting on the outside. So let's take a look at what's happening in the script. You'll notice in the first part of the script are several different functions try if, try case, try while, try until, try for. There are some comments inside each function. We'll talk about those in another video. This big comment here marks the main entry point of the program. So, when we begin running logicandlooping.sh, here is where the script starts with a while loop. While reply, remember that this is a variable which stores the input attained by the red function. That is, user input is stored in the reply variable. So, while the value stored at reply equals the empty string, read, that is, get user input, here's the message, the prompt, which should look familiar, choosing a control flow and then using the new value stored at reply from the read command we can perform a new evaluation if the value stored at reply is part of this regular expression, that is, one of a set, one through five, beginning and end of line. So, a check, basically, that the user has input one of the numbers, one through five. If that is the case, then we break out of the while loop. If that is not the case, we tell the user this is not a valid entry. Reply is set again to an empty string. And we hit the continue operator, which loops us back around to the while. So this chunk of code is basically making sure that we get a valid input from the user. Then we move on to the case statement underneath. Case value stored at reply in so basically this is saying 
if the value stored at reply is 1, we'll execute try if. If it's 2, we'll execute try case, and so on. If it's none of 1 through 5, then something went wrong. This is code that should never be executed if all goes well. So again, get user input, 1 through 5. Use user input to determine which function will run. From the command line, we entered the number 1. Therefore, we executed try if. From now on, we'll look at the functions above this main part of the code. Here are all of the try functions. Try if is number one. Try case is number two. Try while is number three. Try until is number four. And try for is number five. When we input a one, we were telling the script to execute try if. And then here's the second prompt we got. Enter an integer, that is prompt the user to enter an integer, if the user input is not in any of 0 through 9, one or more instances of 0 through 9, then we echo that's not an integer, and then exit the script. If the user input looks good, then we go to this if statement. If user input mod 2 is equal to 0, then we echo the number stored at user and at reply is even, else the number stored at reply is odd. When we input 45, this was the code that was executed. 45 passes this test, does not pass this test, that brings us to else and this line of code right here. Let's try another one of these commands. We'll run the script again, and when prompted to choose a control flow, we'll choose case, and so the function try case will be run. Take a look at the function try case first of all and see if you can predict what you will see in the terminal when we choose case. We'll choose case by entering 2 we enter an upper or lowercase letter. D is uppercase. Great. So did you see what you thought would happen?
we're prompted for an upper or lowercase letter. And then we check to see which of the expressions the value stored at reply matches. Does it match an uppercase letter or does it match a lowercase letter? Or does it match something else? We could also have put in a number or some other character that is not an upper or lowercase letter. If it's an uppercase letter, as we input, then we get the message. The value stored at reply is uppercase, and similar for lowercase. So the topic of this video is control flow and, there are, and its operators. So far, we have looked at two, if and case. Unlike the operators we will look at later, which are loops, these operators contain code which is meant to be run one time. This is code that does not, on its own, return to the beginning. Once we pass the case statement, we do not come back to it. Once we pass if, we do not come back to it. If and case are similar in that each is capable of presenting a list of possible conditions to be met, which will determine the next block of code to be run at a single point in time. Sometimes multiple conditions are met. Case is in some ways a special case of if. By that I mean everything you can do in case could be rewritten as a series of if statements, but not everything in if statements could be rewritten as case. Case is generally used when we want to match a pattern. Here we're looking for the value stored at reply and whether it matches a pattern of uppercase or a pattern of lowercase. What we could not do in case is a mathematical evaluation like we've done here, checking for even or odd. Case can be very handy though if we have multiple possible patterns to which our variable may fit and also because of its ability to check all other cases at the end of the statement. Whereas with our if input, in order to be able to evaluate the value stored at reply mod 2, we first need to check that the input is valid and that it could be compared to 2 or it could be involved in an arithmetic operation. With case, we don't need to make that check we can simply capture all other possible inputs at the end. 